Welcome to this session with the Power Pack for Advanced Steel. And we're taking a look at the create macros, in particular stairs, and we're going to take a look at the different tread connection types available. So we're in Advanced Steel and we're taking a look at the Power Pack for Advanced Steel from Greatech, and in particular we're looking at stair treads and we're going to take a look at their connection methods. So from the previous video, you would have seen the number of tread types available. So we're in the standard tread here, shown obviously by the radio button here. If you come into the same part of the dialog under the tread tab and come down to the sub tab that says connections, you will start to see type is the first menu that's presented. And under this, you can also see that welds is available. And that's because we have several different types here available under here. So this is actually just a straightforward welded connection type. So and that is actually set under here, under this subtyping here. So that is why in this particular instance, we only have the weld feature available. And obviously it can be on treads or on stringers. So if you had a stringer element at uh, active, which you obviously you would do, but you might not have a stringer on one side of the stair, there is an option to turn it off, you can actually influence what is going on. So under here it says shop, you can change it to obviously site, and that will change its assembly method. So that is the very basic form of assembling the stair and making sure it comes as one assembly or as separate piece parts. So if we were to come into this subtype and if we make a slight change in here, we can actually influence this by introducing a flat plate. And by that, I mean a horizontal flat plate. And now we can see that the option has changed. If I just zoom in slightly there through the dialogue, just rotate slightly, you can see that we now have a flat plate with a welded to the stringer with a bolted connection to the plate type tread at the top with a countersunk fixing. We can now see that all the tabs across here are actually active. So now we've got the type set and the subtype, we can change to general. And under here, again, we can see properties that control the plate itself. So that's this element under here. We can actually control how that is made. So in this case, the thickness of it has been set to five millimeters, but Let's say we want a slight change in there, we could make it six millimeters and that will actually change that element of the plate thickness there. Similarly, you can come in and you can change the width of the plate. So if you change it to 60, the width will extend out from the stringer face into the tread zone on the underside, of course. Now, similarly, you can shorten the front and rear edges. So by default, it would come in actually flush to the front of the tread or to the rear of the tread. And you can see I put an influence in figure in there of 30 millimeters. So just to show me altering that, I'm just going to enter 35, which is going to move that back and also influence the bolt position. The bolt is actually controlled within the plate overall size. So again, let's just make a slight difference in there. And close that up just so you can see what's going on. So if we change to welds again we can see we've now got an influence here on stringers again so that's the same as what we saw before so the plate is being welded to the stringer face and you can see the weld symbol just there. Again the bolts will actually be here so at the moment they're on the tread Okay, so and this is the size dialog here controls the diameter of the bolt, the type of the bolt. Again, you have a series of drop down fields available, and it's obviously filtering within the dialog depending upon preferences, etc. Obviously, control of the bolt assemblies that are available under the bolts. You can invert the bolt as well if you so wish. You can influence what's going on here as well for the holes only holes, only on step mount, so you can influence what's going on there for the hole tolerance. You can actually turn it off, so only, only holes, and it will actually turn the bolt off. And obviously change this to a hole diameter, so I'm going to put it back holes for bolts, which is the next setting. And we should see the fixing now reappear in the dialog. 
again you have some parameters to control what's going on here so the front and edge distances so you can see that i've set it to 30 so i may want to reduce that down to 25 so it's going to pull the front bolt nearer the front of the tread and then the, doing the corresponding measurement on the rear will actually pull it towards the heel of the actual plate and the tread Similarly, you have a back mark distance, as I would call it, a uh, side edge. So here at the moment, I could make that slightly different if I wanted to, to move that away from the face of the stringer. So it's going to come away from this stringer face here, moving it out. So that controls all the elements regarding this type of particular fixing. And obviously there are other types of fixings available from the main type list here and we'll go on to cover those in a few minutes. So moving on from that particular type of fixing, let's go and take a look at a different type of fixing available in the system. So we're actually going to move along to a folded pan type tread here. So this is a single tread made from plate, a series of folded plate arrangements. Again, we have a similar situation, obviously, with the stair. So we can actually come into here if we so wish, and we can come into the joint properties to access the bolt fixing or angle fixing detail, how we wish to make the connection between the two elements. So again, come down to tread and come down to connections sub tab, come down into here. And in this case, we're going to try an angle, which is actually the bottom one here. And this will introduce an angle section to the underside. Again, you have a subtype. So at the moment, it's, it's fully welded. So you could leave it like that if you wanted, and it would actually just be welded to the face of the stringer. And obviously with that, you can see here on treads on stringer, it's the general control. You also have the ability to change the angle size from the various drop down lists and the parameters available in there. So let's just leave that uh, as it is. You can have an odd size angle. I've got an even size angle or equal angle, I should say. And let's just come back here to the type. I actually want to influence this with some bolt fixings. So again, you have a couple of options, bolt in the top of the tread, bolted through to the stringer or both bolted here. So I'm just going to influence this through the stringer face with a pair of bolts. So activating that will now change the dialog tab and you'll see the bolts become active here. So again, you can influence the size of what's going on, picking a suitable size bolt in there to make an initial change. So again, let's just pop back here to, so we have type, it's set to bolted. We'll come back in now to general. We can see the angle in place there and probably we want to shorten it from the front edge of the tread. So you typically would have a measurement in here that you would be using. So I'm just going to use that measurement there, 25 millimeters. And again, that will shorten this tread uh, support back from the face of the angle. And then similarly, I'm going to do the same thing correspondingly on the back. Now it may be a different measurement depending on the standard that you're using. And while we're in here, we could just, just make a small change to the corner of the tread here. So I would call this a, a snape. Some people call it a, a chamfer, but you can influence this by cutting slightly across the corner of the tread, uh, sorry, the angle bracket support. So I just need to enter a second figure into here. And with that, we should see a small cut appear on this back quadrant of the angle. Now, obviously, we're going to probably leave the weld because it's going to be on the tread. It's going to be set to the shop. So that welds the angle bracket to the tread itself. We'll just change to the bolt tab. Now, we sort of changed the size earlier on. But what we didn't do was influence, obviously, the parameters for the fixing here. So we need to change that in here. So let's just alter the dimensions. This will be the front one. 
and then the next one will alter the rear measurement here so again we can change this so we can pull the bolts in so they're actually within the body of the angle similarly you can affect the back mark here as i would term it or the distance from the heel of the angle so it will actually adjust and move that You just see that drop down slightly there and again if you want to you can invert the bolt because presently we have the nut on the outside but you may wish to invert the bolt as well to have the nut on the inside and the countersunk element on the outside again the head of the bolt depends upon the type of bolt you fit you pick when you're actually doing this so quite quickly you can see you can set this up and store the various parameters for this particular fixing type so that was using an angle bracket with a bolted detail through the stringer and welded to the tread. So with that, we'll take another look at a different type following after this. So moving on from that particular type. Now, if we come along here, we can see that we're in this type now here, which is the, the grating arrangement. Now, you could weld the grating directly to the stringer face if you so wished but you may wish to change that through the joint dialog and influence it with an end plate detail so again we're now in here we come to tread connections and let's try the vertical end plate Now you can see that it's actually introduced a plate straight away in here and at the moment let's leave it without any fixings on and just go and see what it's doing so i'll put a plate in of a certain thickness you may wish to change that to make it slightly thicker so i'm also influencing the size of that to make it five millimeters the next thing is you may see some chamfer elements in here i can see that there is actually a small cut in there so i know i don't actually need that so i can take that out And now we can we can see that that's actually disappeared i'm just going to change this value in here as well so that we don't don't have any value in there should we accidentally turn it back on obviously we can have a cut at the bottom if so needed i know some suppliers do do that they do have a cut at both the front and the rear you can obviously make those measurements the same if they are the same So just entering in the field cells here and that's obviously going to influence that cut obviously you can have an odd one if you need so just rotate the model around slightly so we can just just see at the moment that we're still out the back there so maybe we want to influence the rear slightly more in this case so maybe we're going to make a slightly longer cut in there so we're just going to move this corner in here and similarly we may wish to adjust this slightly as well so again you can alter those to influence the size of the plate and the arrangement at the moment we only have welds available because that's all we set under the initial subtype but there are other subtypes available so here we're going to do bolted so we're just going to change the subtype to bolted and we now see the bolted tab will become active and again we can influence what's going on with the bolt arrangement now within here obviously you can come in and change the size again if you so wish obviously you can influence that and invert the bolts I'm just going to change that there we do get an option for a slot here for the second hole as well and we obviously get measurement distances here now this is actually working from the front of the tread so you need to just sort of look at the dialogue so d3 is actually 
the vertical measurement there so let's just change that back to maybe 30 millimeters so that's going to move that up slightly in there again this is the distance between the bolts so this may be uh, slightly longer than you would normally expect it to be so we're just going to alter this distance which, which extends the gap between these two bolts here and let's sorry let's just alter that one there that one should be slightly longer so let's just make that one 50 millimeters and let's just alter this down to 45 to pull that up slightly with it in the body So again, you can see that the tread plate fixing has been added in onto the end of the tread. Obviously, there's a countersunk hole there, and the bolt is available there. So we've adjusted that within the confines of the macro. And you can always come back in and obviously alter it again if you so wish. So we're going to take a look at one final arrangement here. So we're just going to access the properties for this. Just moving that, change again into the tread, into the connection. So this is the special part tread. And we can see here that we don't actually have any subtypes available. That's because the type of tread that we actually picked, which was the special part tread, the dimensions panel is actually controlling the fixing arrangement. And your only variables available are obviously the bolt size, the bolt type, the grade, and the nut and washer assembly. And obviously you could invert the bolts if you wanted, or you could set it just to create holes which would turn the bolt off so that is a bit different to all the other types you are able to influence the bolt arrangement within the macro but not for this particular one here because it's a special part tread so i'm just going to flip that back on and turn those bolts back on by activating that checkbox there i'm going to come out of that dialog and i'm just going to remind everyone that you can use the special part manager to access the bolt configuration for a particular tread type that is a special part under this tool here. This is where you'll see the parameters set for the physical hole measurements, etc., within this dialog using these fields here. So that concludes the brief introduction to the different connector types available within the PowerPack macro.